You are now listening to the most talked about blog talk radio station in the universe. Walk in his ways, Impact Voice Radio. Be prepared to have your mind stimulated, your spirit elevated in ways you couldn't even imagine. Introducing your host and the mastermind behind this unforgettable experience, Furman Jackson Jr. You will not be disappointed. Let's go! Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Walking This Way's Impact Wars Podcast. I'm your host, Furman Jackson Jr. I'm broadcasting live from my new home, my new location of Arlington, Texas, outside Dallas and Fort Worth. Big shout out to DFW. Big shout out to some other surrounding areas. Big shout out to my hometown of Mobile, Alabama. Big shout out to Wakinia in the state of Mississippi. Big shout out to everybody. Big shout out to Mr. Craig and and those who's tuning in here on the here to the podcast, we're very excited about tonight's podcast. I'm very excited about tonight's podcast. I know you're excited about tonight's podcast. And the question that we're going to ask tonight, we're going to be talking about auto insurance. That's something that we don't look into. We look into other things else, but we never look into auto insurance. We know auto insurance is very important, especially living in Dallas. People drive crazy here, so that insurance is very important. So make sure you get that full covered insurance, whatever you need to get. But well, I have an insurance expert here, um, Craig. He's going to be talking about the insurance guy, the book that he has. He's going to ask some questions about insurance for those who need to know more about insurance. And that's something that we need to have. That's the necessity that we need to have here when it comes to your vehicles. If you have wrecks, that does play a huge role unless you want to pay out of pocket. And trust me, the most expensive cost. And that's something you don't want to do. But before we get to kick it off with the uh, Q and A with Craig, I have Kenny Primetime Williams out of the state of Mississippi. He's gonna bring the latest news, the updates. I know he's gonna bring some highlights about the big game on last night with the Cowboys with their season open at home. Big shout out to the Cowboys for winning their game at home. They're now two and one, and we believe that the way they keep playing, they can make some noise in the playoffs. So Kenny, take away with the news. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, pump your brakes. Stop what you're doing. You have now entered the Prime Zone. I'm your host, Kenny Prime Time Williams. And on this segment, we're going to get into some things. We're going to talk about last night. We're going to talk about this past weekend in the NFL. A lot of things going on in the NBA. The season is back, so we got just a little bit to go over in a short amount of time, but I think we can handle it. How about yourself? Everybody out there, I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to give shots out to Mobile, Alabama, the state of Alabama, the Mississippi Gulf Coast, Dallas, Texas, Greenville, Mississippi, and everybody on the sound of my voice, thank you for tuning in. We do appreciate it. Now, let's start off in the NBA. The NBA started media day today and now a lot of questions have been going around different teams um the first thing of business Kyrie Irving for or the Brooklyn Nets did not show up for uh media day or the start of training camp due to the fact that he doesn't believe in getting vaccinated and uh a lot of not just him but a lot of players have had their concerns I've watched the Lakers media day today and all 100% of the Lakers team are vaccinated. And they gave very good reasons why they did. There was a lot of players that was against it. And there was a lot of players that was for it. But they thought they did the best thing for their family. They did the best thing for the team. And everybody is, is vaccinated. So I'm hoping that will help a lot of other people come along the way and help out the other players that doesn't believe and is not really sold on the vaccination. I've been vaccinated and I hope you are too. So continue to be safe out there, ladies and gentlemen. But um, training camp has got underway. The Lakers, the uh, the whole Lakers basketball team did a mini camp, just players only this past weekend in Las Vegas. LeBron James has set it all up, and it gave the chance for players to become uh, more bonded with each other. So I thought that was a very good gesture from a man that just, just set a lot of great examples for his team. Moving on, 
Ben Simmons did not report at all as well. Ben Simmons said he is not coming to Philadelphia and he could be fine each day he missed training camp. And he said he refuses to play or put on another Philadelphia 76ers uniform. So we'll see where, how he ends up and where he goes. That we don't know if he's going to sit out this year. We don't know if he's going to, um, whatever he's got his plans on doing, his people is going to get together and hopefully that they will be able to find a deal and find him somewhere good to play because I think he's an awesome player. I think he's a great player and I think he's just been dead wrong in a wrong situation. So continue our prayers up to him. Now, moving on, we're going to get to the NFL. Did y'all see last weekend? Last weekend, it really, really, a lot of things happened. A lot of um, records were broken or a lot of records were set, that is. And we're going to get into that. We're going to start by last night's game with the Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, as you can see behind me, I am a very big Cowboy fan. Born and raised, diehard Cowboy fan. I love my Cowboy fans. Big shout out to Mr. Furman for going to this game on last night. I remember my first experience. It was amazing. I had a great time, and I know he did too. So, um, big up to that. And now, I'm, I, I just want to let you guys know that the Cowboys did win and, did, and won in a great fashion. Beating the Philadelphia um, Eagles. 41 to 21. It was an awesome game from start to finish. Uh, Dak Prescott first game back from his injury and was very emotional beginning of the game, but came out and did a rocket thing to CeeDee Lamb and he set the tone of the game. The defense played great. The defense played lights out all night long. I was very proud and impressed about them. Um, I'm looking for extraordinary things coming out of the Cowboys camp this, this year. And um, I was impressed with the backfield, the running game. The, the switching up with Zeke and the switching up with Tony Pollard, I think it was very awesome. So big up to the Cowboys beating the Philadelphia Eagles 41-21, to putting them first place in the NFC East. Also a couple of scores, uh, the Washington Redskins uh, lost to the Buffalo Bills. That was a traumatic game. Um, the Chicago Bears lose to the Cleveland Browns 26-6. to And in that game, Cleveland, along his defense, um, they recorded nine sacks on a uh, rookie quarterback for Chicago Bears, Justin Fields. They recorded nine sacks, so uh, that was a great defensive game. It was a very uh, struggling game for the rookie quarterback, but I, I really believe he's going to get it together. Being said that, the head coach of the Chicago Bears reported that all three of them, he don't know who's going to start. All three of them is ready to go, so we'll see who will be behind center on Sunday. We also have a couple of more scores. The Ravens and the Lions. This game went all the way down to a wire with a record-setting field goal. Oh, my God. It was it, it was something amazing to see at the end of a 66-yarder from the uh, field goal kicker, and it bounced the end of the, the pole and bounced on in, and no one in the NFL has topped that those much yardage. So, um I was very impressed with that. That was a strong lead of that young man. So congratulations to the Baltimore Ravens on a 19-17 victory over the Detroit Lions. We also have the Saints losing to the New England Patriots 28-13. And speaking of the New England Patriots, Tom Brady will return to New England this coming Sunday night. It has been a big frenzy, and today is just Tuesday. They've been talking about how Bill Belichick and how Tom is going to react to coming back to Foxborough and getting ready to play the New England, his former team, New England Patriots. Tom says it's going to be another game for him, but everybody knows that he's going to get emotional. Being that he had been there for 10 years and uh, plus 10 plus years, and he's done so much for that organization. And so that's where he starts at. He's going back home this, this coming weekend. So everybody tune in. And I wish him well on his homecoming going back to New England. Also, the Giants fall to the Atlanta Falcons, 17 to 14. The Bengals top off against the Pittsburgh Steelers, 24 to 10. The Buccaneers lose to the LA Rams, 24 to 34. I wish Emo was on here because I saw that game. And that game was just terrible. I'm really not a Tom Brady fan. I do give him props with props is due. He is the GOAT, but I won't, I'm not a fan of him. But they lost against Aaron Donald and his defense of the L.A. Rams. So big, good, big job and good congratulations on that. Now, 
I'm going to move on a little bit. Richard Sherman. We all know Richard Sherman, all Pro Bowl cornerback, uh, formerly of the Seattle Seahawks, formerly of the San Francisco 49ers. He has a workout schedule with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he's going to visit them on tomorrow, and he has a workout with them on that same day. So we're going to look to see if he's still in good condition and good shape to be ready for uh, to join the team and, and continue with the season. Also with the Cowboys, Trayvon Diggs also had a pick six on last night, has already topped off with all cornerbacks in the NFL, leading the, the, the pack with three interceptions already. And that is impressive. Uh, I love the kid. A lot of Alabama talent on the field last night. Uh, kudos to Nick Saban and um, of the Crimson Tide. And, and, and he, he's just um, – uh, is amazing coach, and he has all these, these players playing in the NFL. And last night, I saw a lot of uh, people from uh, formerly of Alabama playing on Monday Night Football. So that was a great thing to see. That's all for me today, people. I like to say thank you, and I like to say thank you for watching a good segment of the Prime Zone. Mr. Furman is all yours, but I want to tell everybody in the land, I love you. God loves you. Jesus loves you, and nothing you can do about it. Peace. Appreciate it, Prime Time, with the latest news and updates in the sports world. We want to thank everybody once again for tuning in with us, kicking in with us, hanging out with us, and things of that nature. Uh, I know before I got on the air tonight, I was just thinking about something. It just really hit my spirit earlier about Job. Um, everybody knows the story of Job. Everybody knows Job went through some things. Everybody knows Job went, had some trials and tribulations. But... Well, I want to tell with everybody, in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your tribulations, still worship God. Even though Job got bad news that his children passed, um, he lost everything. He still worshiped God in the midst of his storm. In this generation today, when when all hell break loose, people quit to get on the phone, get on social media. Um, they turn to alcohol, they turn to drugs, even some even some commit suicide. But when you have a relationship with God, I'm talking about the true living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you can withstand the trials of life. You can withstand the tribulations of life. I know everything may look crazy, bank account low, it's in the negative, foreclosure, losing jobs, marriage on the rocks, children acting haywire, but when you have a relationship with God and worship God, no matter how it may look, worship God in spirit and in truth. And I just want to encourage somebody with that word tonight. In the midst of your trials, still worship God. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to worship God. We worship God in the midst of the good as well as the bad. Because we know that he is in control. We know that he know all and see all. And I just want to encourage y'all with that word tonight. Um, most importantly, we're going to be talking about auto insurance tonight. I have a book author, businessman, um, a guy become friends with on social media, um, Craig. He's going to be talking about some insurance. For those that don't know what about anything about insurance or never thought insurance was important, having insurance is important. Especially if you got teenagers. <laughs> I, I don't have any children, but if you have teen, teenagers, we know that. The insurance is a high risk when it comes to teenagers because they consider them a high risk as driving. So we'll get more off into that. But I want my guest to introduce himself once again. Welcome to Walking This Way's Impact Voice Podcast. Hey, thanks so much uh, for um, uh, bringing me on your show, uh, Furman. I've been looking forward to it. I um, appreciate the Christian perspective. I'm a Christian owned business and man and author myself. I've known the Lord since I was eight, and I just turned 57 two months ago. So uh, I'm excited about walking with the Lord, and I've, I've been uh, working working on myself and involved in a men's group at church and some other studies. And uh, so uh, getting down to my subject of expertise, um, I just published a book called The Insider's Guide to Auto Insurance, How to Get the Best Insurance for an Affordable Investment. And uh, I'm also the author of three other books. Those books are on Amazon. Uh, they're in the ground transportation space. Um, I have the old, I have a couple of ultimate common sense uh, group and ground transportation guides. My, my uh, flagship book is for churches and schools. Uh, the series is called How to Learn Not to Crash and Burn. And it's all about how to stay out of scams and crashes and lawsuits when you uh, travel because uh, my other company is Spec Ground Transportation. So I, 
I do both ground transportation and insurance. And as you know, those two tie together very closely. Um, the um, first two books um, are, as I said, they're uh, ultimate common sense transportation guides. Uh, the uh, third book, I'm a featured author in a book called Conversations with Elite Business Leaders. And I've written those four books over a period of seven years. Um, I always suggest to everyone, if they can, possibly to at least publish one uh, physical book as it's, uh, it really gets you out there as the expert authority and celebrity. We've all got at least one in us. And so I uh, highly encourage that. Um, I'm, uh, I live in uh, Mansfield. I've been married almost 30 years. I have one son that I'm very proud of. He's um, 19 and founder of Brothers in Christ, which is a group of young men that, uh, that meet every week at my home and they play basketball and they sing and they pray and they go over a life lesson and read scriptures and, and help each other. They range from uh, 13 to age 13 to 22. Excited, excited about uh, everything that's going on in my life and the chance to uh, come meet the one, the only, the magnificent Furman. <laughs> and I appreciate you, Craig. Um, awesome background, awesome stuff. And it's a blessing that to see a man of faith, a man that's about sowing good seed. You know, the Bible speaks about generation, you know, especially being a man, a man of God's own heart and being an example to your son and being an example to your family. And the Bible says that when you walk up, right, you be blessed. Your children, children be blessed. And that's what God wants. And I'm very excited tonight that we talk about auto insurance. Um, I know people don't look at auto insurance as something major until when they actually have a wreck. And then a lot of times when these wrecks happen, people don't have no insurance. And mom, I'm gonna ask you this question. Why, as you've been in this business, and from your opinion, why do people don't take the insurance seriously? Like they take everything else seriously. Well, you know, Furman, it's one of those things that people really have to get a grip on that, you know, the, the auto insurance is uh, protecting them from uh, loss of life, you know, not necessarily from loss of life, but just it's a shield between you and what happens out there. You know, if you, um, the people who go without auto insurance, and I, I run across this all the time, uh, being an independent agent representing 75% of the market. Um, and this, of course, is a new agency for me. I was a captive agent with farmers before, and uh, we weren't able to help anybody that uh, wasn't previously insured for at least six months or longer. Um, I had a guy the other day that um, he had three accidents uh, in a very short period of time. He had uh, no insurance since May, and I was able to get him insured because I represent so many different companies. But what, uh, and what happened to him is he just got laid. A lot of people just get laid off and it's one of the first things that they cut. But what they don't understand, it should be the one thing that they keep because the average auto accident in Texas is around $450,000 with lawsuits. And if you don't have the proper coverage, I mean, like you were saying earlier, when you got to come out of pocket for that, or you got to go and borrow to pay for it, that's, that's not a really good good way to uh, protect your uh, you know your investments your assets. I mean, you know they come they'll come after it and get it all unless it's put away in a in some kind of uh, asset that's uh, protected you know by law uh, or by certain you know or certain rules. Um, you can lose everything if you don't have the proper amount of insurance. Yeah. And the, the, you know, the state limit is never enough. Oh yeah, and I totally agree. Because I said my B better to have that than not at all. But oh, I, I mean, I totally agree. Because me being here for nine months, and I see the rate, especially with me going to work. I work the midnight shift. I work for uh, the county in Dallas, and I see the wrecks that happens on occasion. Cars backed up for miles. I'm in Arlington. Cars backed up for miles, and I'm in one night. It was a bad accident that happened. And they had to turn everybody back around. I had to call out to work that night because that's how bad it was. And when you come across people, they didn't have any insurance. They want to go raise money. And I think it shouldn't be like that. The responsibility. Because I know if you bring up all the insurance, first thing people would say, well, I can't afford it. And, well, we go out to the restaurants and go by the latest trends. But when it comes to the more important things, um, it really doesn't matter. And I know as you've been in this business, I know you can come across this stuff numerous times where P 
people wants to get insurance after the wreck happened. Um, when it comes to how do you handle that um, when somebody who had a wreck yesterday, now all of a sudden they want to get insurance today? Well, it's, it is interesting because you've got to prepare that particular person to understand that they're going to be investing a lot more and that, you know, you can't, obviously you can't cover what's already happened buying insurance after the fact, but being prepared for the next round, you know, having a, a particular level, I mean, you know, my principal uh, agent and uh, Chris Scott and myself and in my book, we recommend, you know, having 100,000 in liability, 300,000 per occurrence and 100,000 in property damage. You know, your state minimums only give you 30,000 uh, in, in bodily injury, 60,000 total, uh, you know, per, per accident and 25,000 property damage. And that can be gone just like that. Mm. And, and, you know, medical expenses and, uh, you know, damages to other property. It just, it just it skyrockets. And so it's, it's so important to have, uh, you know, somebody on your side. And, you know, the problem being, uh, you know, not having insurance or having multiple wrecks is you're going to invest more. But you at some point, in, you know, you've got to, and you didn't have insurance in that wreck, you've got to, you got to break in, you got to get in and get that first six months of insurance. Because after that, everything's reevaluated. And I always suggest to people that they take the longer term, the 12 months. If it's not that much more than the six and the monthly investment is the same, go ahead and get insured for 12 months. So you don't have to mess with it. Nobody really likes to talk about insurance, and but it is a it is a necessary conversation to have, and that's why I wrote this book because I wanted to have some helpful information I could put out there where people could understand insurance terms. I've even got a glossary in the back uh, where they know what to do and what not to do in an accident. You've been talking about that, and uh, I can definitely share some tips, you know, on that part of it because people do. People get in an accident, and um, even if it's a small one, it's like their head's in a fog. They don't think about what they should be doing. And, and my book uh, gives, gives them those steps in order from A to Z, and in many other aspects of it. And awesome Making stuff right there. And I know by you being an insurance business, how long have you been in the insurance business? Is it something that you always wanted to do it just happened one day how did it all happen it's kind of interesting for the last 32 years i've been in the ground transportation industry and as i mentioned i've all authored those three books i'm considered the the go-to guy for that um i had my own business for 16 years uh still have it part-time spec ground transportation in 2017 one of my suppliers hired me away to go to work for them and so I sold and leased and rented buses with them for about two and a half, almost three years. And they laid me off in June of 2020. So I brought my, I brought my company back and uh, started working with, you know, like Dallas Baptist University, a few uh, good, you know, good clients that I have and, uh, and some churches and providing transportation for them. And um, about a few months after trying some things and deciding what I wanted to do, a farmer's, uh, a farmer's rep approached me and uh, I came on with them. I got, got my PNC property and casualty license and my life and health license. And I, I joined them and was with them for about eight and a half months. And the problem with being a captive agent, you know, for anybody that's considering the insurance field is that you're tied down to one company and uh, you get beat up and bloody because sometimes you may come in and you look great. And sometimes you come back with a with an ugly quote and you know you've only got one company to represent and that company can easily be greedy and think of only themselves you know not wanting to insure those that have not had insurance six months not wanting to having all these reasons and all these pieces of their appetite that they don't want now that I represent 75 percent of the market I don't have to turn anybody away now on occasion I do get somebody who's had five claims on their house and a five-year period and then you know had one guy that was trying to help and just you know you can't you can't help him because his uh, his rates just going to be astronomical and the best thing for me to do is become his agent of record <laughs> with that wow. carrier but yeah I've had, a, I've had about a year in insurance and um 
I just decided to go ahead and put that, you know, I, I, I took too long to write my first three books. I didn't become an author until 2014, but um, across the last seven years, and I'm, I'm writing now the Insider's Guide to Home Insurance. It's going to be my next book. But this auto insurance book, I just felt like since I was from that industry, you know, transportation, rental vehicles, um, and I've written some common sense books that I should go ahead and put one together for. And I, I love to do the auto insurance more than any other, just because of 32 years and, and, and I've dealt with all kinds of situations where, you know, people had wrecks in 15 passenger vans and, you know, um, helping them understand the coverages that the rental company offers and why you should or shouldn't take those. So, you know, just lots of, lots of research on, you know, three decades of experience and then combined with the last year in insurance, but never really thought about uh, becoming an insurance agent. And then um, I left farmers a couple of months ago and bought an independent agency with Texas edge insurance in Arlington. And as I said, now I represent 75% of the market. And uh, what I'm doing now is more geared toward what's in my book because my, I wrote the book from an independent agent perspective but I was a captive agent for that first eight and a half months. And that's some awesome stuff. And I can tell you about you being, especially you being a man of faith, a man of God, um, having that integrity, um, the morals, the values that we need more in the, in the, in this world that we're in, um, having those Christian values as you being a business as well as a Christian, how do you implement your faith in business as well? I love that question. Uh, one of the things that I do is uh, before I get off the phone with uh, almost everyone, and I picked this up from uh, a pastor back in 2000, uh, went to Victory Fellowship. It's no longer around, but for 21 years, I've been praying for clients on the phone. And I would just, you know, it, it's a simple thing. And, you know, to all of you Christians out there who are listening to this or watching this, and you may uh, wonder, you know, how can I be a witness one way that you can you can always say a prayer for someone you can ask them at the close of a conversation or if you're on the phone with them and they tell you that somebody's sick or that they, they're really stressed out um, you can say well uh, what can I pray for, with you about that today or uh, what I usually my closing question is usually is there um, you know, before we hang up, is there anything that I can pray with you about? I can take to the Lord and we can just agree that, you know, you know, do you need healing? Do you need help with finances? Do you need, um, you know, because our God isn't really an awesome God of revelation, of uh, restoration, renewal and rejuvenation. And when you pray together, it says, if two or three agree on anything in my name, it shall be done. And whether two or three are gathered, I'm in the midst of them also says in Romans 8 28 that all things work together for good because um, you know you, you love the Lord and you're called according to his purpose but I usually will pray the prayer of Jabez over that person and then I'll kind of expand it out a little bit because I'll ask God to grow them in several areas and expand their boundaries and, and bless them with strategic alliances and joint ventures I kind of I kind of customize the prayer and you know, I pray, oh, I like to pray over everybody at least once because it, it touches their life more than giving them a book. And once in a while, I'll share scripture with somebody, but it's usually my blessing them from the Lord involves a prayer at the end of the conversation. Now, don't do it for a salesy, you know, sales thing. It's just my way of implementing my faith, as you said, and, and, and acting it out. And, you know, I do try to invite people to church and I'm in a men's group at church where I'm a table leader. In fact, uh, tonight was uh, almost at a cross up here because I and I told my my uh, the head of the, the head guys in the in men of Issachar, my church, uh, TCAL, that we uh, planned this a month in advance. And I was I was keep I'm keeping my commitment. So uh, I knew I knew that you had uh, told a lot of folks about this. And so. Um, I definitely wanted to be here and be a part of what we're doing, but yeah, that's the way that I do it is just, you know, praying for them and just, and I, and just, I had a lady crying on the phone with me yesterday. You could hear the, hear the tears yesterday, even as praying for, and she had gone through some things. And so, yeah. you know, we've all got something that we're going through and we need to be touched by others and prayer is, and even if somebody says, uh, no, I'm good. I said, well, how about a general health and welfare prayer? That always, you know, 99 times out of 100, 
you know, and sometimes they say, well, I'm good. Don't need prayer. Okay. Well, tell you what, say, I'll say a prayer for you after I get off the phone. You know, I want them to know how important they are to me that I'm focused on bettering their life. We're, we're putting people's lives for a certain season and reason to make their life better, to make their life more enhanced, more secure, whatever benefits that we get. But if we're inwardly focused, we're always looking at ourselves. All we care about is the guy or gal in the mirror. It's a losing proposition because I've always said givers gain, takers lose, and they lose big. Oh, and um, I like how you say it. I just how you say implement enhance their lives. No, not looking at them as a dollar sign. No, got people in business. They look at people as a dollar sign. But how can? But not looking at how can I serve them? How can I make them better? Now that make them feel welcome, make them feel wanted. That wow. Craig cares about me. He's not looking at me as a client, but he's looking at me as an individual who going through some things, experiencing, dealing with some things. And the whole pandemic, we know that a lot of people lost their lives physically, um, also mentally, because we know the suicide rate went up. So you never know what somebody is going through um, in the midst of chaos. But no, but also I'm a man of priorities. I believe as a man, the Bible says that we're supposed to be the providers um, but the insurance is very important for those who don't take it lightly. Take this insurance seriously because you can pull out out of your driveway, and for you know it, somebody can side swipe. We just never know when we on that road. Anything can happen. Oh, especially if you had a light, somebody flying out paying attention can hit you in the back. So don't take that lightly, ladies and gentlemen. Also, we'll talk about more about the book. Um, what inspires you to write this book to get this information out? Um, to the community, to the people who never looked at it, but helped bring awareness to the insurance. Well, I believe that, you know, there's a, there's a serious lack of knowledge across the board, you know, and how to, um, you know, everything from just understanding insurance terms to dealing with the claims process. And, you know, Simple stuff. I, I, I tried to break it down as simple, simple as I could. Just you know, just an easy explanation of everything. Like, you know, if you take for example the uh, one of one of the chapters. I almost say it's nine or twelve. <laughs> I've done some videos, so I get those crossed up a little bit. I think it's one of my chapters. I have a uh, I talk about what to do and what not to do in an accident. And you know, what are the two stupidest words that people say when they get out of the car at the scene of an accident? It's usually two words or three words. I'm sorry, or it's my fault. And either way, you have you've just you've just ruined everything. Uh, a quick story: I had a lady who told me that she witnessed an accident, and she went up to both cars and said, "Oh, I'm so sorry, y'all are hurt." They blamed her for the accident because she said, "I'm sorry." Those are two words that should never be used at the scene of an accident. I'm sorry, because you're admitting fault at the scene. Um, you know, and, and, go ahead. I mean, that's, she didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, she didn't have anything they, to do with it, they but they tried her. to blame it on her because she said, I'm sorry, you know, at the scene. And so uh, with that, you know, those are two words to be avoided uh, at the scene of any accident. Even if you're a witness, don't say I'm sorry. You know, you can ask and say, uh, you can ask them, you know, what can I do to help? Are you hurt? You know, should I call an ambulance? You know, anything, but I'm sorry, because it's just two words that you're just basically just go ahead and just put a little bullseye on your head. Wow. Just, <laughs> so don't, don't, don't think about the language they use when they get out of the car. I mean, really don't. So they actually, they, they could write that up in a police report. And that person gets stuck with it, right? Can he get stuck with that? Well, that in other words, just when you when you go there, you go and you get out of your car, and whether you've been rear-ended or, you know, you're not supposed to admit any fault at the scene. Gotcha. You know, even if it was your fault. I mean, you know, if it's determined that it was, but never say I'm sorry at the scene of an accident. You know, another thing, Furman, that people do when they get in an accident on the highway, and this happened to me. I got rear-ended by a, a one car. Actually, I had a, a car speeding, a young man speeding behind me, and he pushed me into another car. And um, we all pulled, and I, I hit that car because he ran into me, but we were over on the left shoulder on Highway 360. And, um, you know, instead of standing out there and uh, 
you know, blocking the, you know, blocking the side of the road. I said, I said, I said, y'all, let's do this. Let's get, people get killed on the highway. Let's get off the highway and go over here to this next exit. Y'all follow me. We'll work our way over. We'll go to a parking lot and we'll exchange information. The law says that you have got to get those cars out of the way. You can't block the road or an intersection. What happens is you get two people have this little minor fender bender and they're right in the left lane of a service road. That's a four way intersection. And they're, I've seen this happen and they're sitting out there exchanging information and they've got to, they got to move off of the road because nobody's injured. If you're injured, then that's a different story. But in our case, it was all minor and I wanted to be safe. So we got off of the highway, we exchanged information. And, you know, uh, of course, the guy behind me admitted, you know, admitted fault at the scene. He knew he was, but, you know, don't say I'm sorry. Don't admit your fault. Get all of the information at the accident. Take pictures of the car, get the license numbers, uh, get the car, get the insurance of both drivers, get everything. The more you document, the better things will go claim process. Um, most importantly, having that stuff in order, having all your priorities. Exactly. Uh, um, I also want to talk about with teens, teenagers, um, the, their rates. Uh, how do, when you working with a family and they'll put a 16-year-old on, how does that work? I know, does it skyrocket um, the insurance also compared with the uh, age of the parents? It can uh, with, you know, I have a 19 year old, um, you know, my son, my only son who's on my insurance and has been on it since he was about 17. And, you know, be prepared to invest more because it is going to, uh, you know, it may be a shock. There are, there's at least one discount that, you know, can, can apply, which is a good student discount. So, if the, you know, the student has good grades and keeps them at a particular level. A, a student can also take a defensive driving course. I mean, there's a few things that you can do to shield some of that additional, you know, premium from just hitting you square in the face. And that's just, you know, and, and you know, teaching your kids, you know, common sense about, about driving. You know, um, I think it's important. I think it's important for a parent to, to teach the kid how to drive, really you know, to, to, to show and, and to be a good example to them because you can't tell your kid not to speed and, um, you know, and burn off and do those things if they've seen you doing it. So setting an example for them is also going to keep them from, you know, not every time, but it, it's just another safeguard. You teach them to drive properly. You set the example for them. You know, you're not driving down the street 60 miles an hour and telling them to drive 30. That's extremely hypocritical. So that's some of my advice on that. Like no, like no texting, no driving, and people on their phones and not paying attention. And I know we got it now in this generation where people could put their phone on their dashboard and be going live, talking, driving at the same time, which I think is just pretty dangerous because you, once you get off into it, then you hit someone else. That's crazy. Yeah, um, but absolutely. So priorities are important. Um, the book, how can people get the book and how can it get in contact with you? You got all this great wealth of knowledge um, from your experience. Well, uh, my agency is called Craig Speck Insurance Agency. I'm based in Mansfield, Texas. And uh, they can call me at 817-437-8702. Um, I can autograph and send them a physical book uh, or... Um, I have a digital, I have a digital copy that can be shared. It's a flip book and I can send it to uh, my email is Craig, C-R-A-I-G at TexasEdgeAgency.com, T-E-X-A-S-E-D-G-E-A-G-E-N-C-Y.com, Craig at TexasEdgeAgency.com. So they can email me or call me on my mobile or text me and say, hey, I heard you, I heard you on Furman's show, um, can you send me a copy of your book? Some people are, some people are turn the page, others read digitally. Uh, but I do, uh, anybody that wants a physical copy, which I'm in the process of getting ready to order a lot more, I'm down to four in my office, which is really unusual. I personally autograph it and I send you a business card magnet uh, to put on your, I'm a big believer in not giving out regular business cards, even though I include one with the book. 
magnets and books are the two things that you can do with marketing. They don't go away. A lot of business cards end up in the trash. You know, these are peel off business card magnets and you just you buy them from the store, from Amazon, you peel them, put them on there. I've used them for so many years. A millionaire friend of mine, it's his number one marketing tool out of his top seven. Well, he he uses magnets in his and his two books. I do books and then magnets because I believe <laughs> I believe having a book is the most powerful thing that you can you know that you can do besides praying for others and living for the Lord. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, I lo- I love reading books. You got my my house, my library upstairs. I got wealth of knowledge. All the books I love reading. Uh, yeah, Jim, Rohn, Jim Rohn was uh, kind of like Zig Ziglar. I don't know if you recognize either of those two names. You may be, uh, they may have been uh, before your time. You're, you're younger, you're a younger guy, but uh, Jim Rohn uh, used to say, and he passed, he uh, left us in 2009, but he used to say, I have a big library and I haven't read everything in it, but I feel a lot smarter just walking by it. <laughs> and that's how I feel about it. It's not near as big as his, but you know, I have books from all the grades and it's great to be able to use them as a reference and seeing your own books in your library is pretty cool too. It is. It yeah. really is. Cause we know that books are, I know people listen to auto books and, and I said, there's good, but I know that people start to read more. And I guess when the whole you know, United States country shut down, people start educating instead. They start reading, they start catching up on a lot of things. And like I said, I never thought I know insurance is important is important, but to actually hear that it's a book on auto insurance, the insurance insider's guide to all this information to help us out and break down the, the difference between the six months and the twelve months. Cause I know a lot of people get the six months, but not the twelve months. Well, and those that haven't had insurance before are going to be limited to a six month policy because the insurance company is not going to be willing to take a risk on you for one year until they've tested you out for six months to see how you're going to do. So um, I find that, um, you know, if I always encourage everybody who already has insurance to, to go for the 12 months, I'll give you an example. When I was a farmer's agent, uh, farmers didn't like to do the 12 month policy. Uh, they charged, uh, you know, you, you would think it'd be six months times two, but they would add a big premium to it because if something happened during the course of that 12 months, they wouldn't be able to change the rate. And so they were stuck with you as a risk for that long, long term. And, you know, for instance, I represent Progressive. And when I do now, when I do, they're one of the auto companies I do a lot with, six months, 12 months, the same monthly investment. It's a little bit more down when it's a 12 month, but you've got the same monthly investment. So why not go for the longer 12 months if you can? You know, it's great to not have to mess with it. You don't have to have that same conversation every six months for one year. And, and you know, if you pay in full, <laughs> you know, you, you get discounts depending on how large the premium is. You get anywhere from, you know, save a hundred to $300 just paying in full sometimes. Somebody, sometimes someone has that, cash sitting there and they're not planning on investing. I'm going to go ahead and pay my insurance for a year in full. I have some family that, uh, that decided to do that. And they saved quite a bit for paying in full. So, um, I, you know, I recommend the 12 months, but again, those that haven't had insurance before, you know, are, are going to be limited to six months and they're going to be limited to the number of carriers that will insure them or will take a look at them. Like, wow. And I also want to ask the court. Never please. cancel your auto insurance. <laughs> you know, nah. if it gets canceled, that's one thing, but just don't, I just, if there's, if, you know, you got to cut an expense, keep your autos insured. Keep them protected. You got to, because we'll keep the Netflix before we keep the insurance. <laughs> right. Right. I'm saying we'll pay for that monthly, but when it exactly. comes to the, well, the auto insurance, doesn't entertain you. It just uh, keeps you, you know, it just it puts a shield between you and, you and life and, and what can happen. So. Yeah. And I think that's important because who wants to kick us out, not no $100, but who wants to kick out thousands of dollars, including medical expenses out of your pocket? That's too much. You take your food out of your own family mouth, just take care of a complete stranger. Who wants to go through that? I don't want to go through that Absolutely. at all, period. Um, another question I want to ask too, at first with time, when it comes to tickets and stuff like that, um, does that also affect the insurance as well, like traffic tickets or things like that? 
Yeah, when uh, I know when I quote a client, um, I, I run there's several reports that I that I have the uh, insurance company, you know, run uh, to see, you know, it's past accidents, uh, you know, yeah, on your motor vehicle record, which is, you know, has your mo has moving violations on it, you know, if you've got tickets, you know, it's when you're convicted on the ticket that you get, uh, you can get your rates can go up. I mean, with me, when I was younger, I had a lead foot, like a lot of young guys do, you know, and just uh, as, as if my foot was stuck to the accelerator, I didn't know what a brake was. But, you know, and I'd, I'd get pulled over and get a ticket. And I, I was accused uh, for a while of making my um, lawyer's Mercedes payment, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, but it's $75 a shot to pay him to go to court and, um, you know, take care of that ticket that got dismissed. I, I saved a lot of, you know, insurance increases. Yeah, they look at, they look at tick tickets. They look at past accidents. I mean, everything that you do, your credit score, can affect your, um, you know, your insurance, um, you know, where you live, uh, what kind of car you drive. I mean, if you've got a, you know, if you've got a, a, a car that, that's stolen all the time versus some, uh, you know, safe, safe car that, uh, you know, no thief's going to want to touch, you know, I mean, yeah, there's going to be a difference in premium there. If you've got, you know, if you've got a bunch of, that have got a souped up, souped up car with a bunch of extra electronics in there you know you probably ought to insure those if those are you know add-ons because you have to have special insurance for that too so you know that's not going to be covered in your basic car insurance and even a motorcycle is not covered on car insurance you got to get separate insurance for a motorcycle so wow yeah. so i guess with the motorcycle it's more risk than compared to a car i yes. guess it makes yeah. sense right so let me ask you a question on that, on the motorcycle uh, insurance. And I know you probably deal with that. Um, what is the average rate uh, for insurance for a motorcycle? Well, it, it's based on so many different factors. In fact, when I do a motorcycle quote, it's one of the more complicated because I want the, the insurance companies want to know everything from how much time have you been on a motorcycle to are you in an association you know, uh, of motorcycle riders. I mean, it's the same thing as like with RVs and, you know, they want to know how much driver training you had. They want to know everything about that motorcycle, whether it's stored, you know, how much it's ridden during the year. You know, there are so many questions that are involved in the motorcycle quotes. It's, it's a very customized type of uh, rate situation, but I, I mean, I can do it. I mean, in, in my agency, I can pretty much do anything, commercial health, life, auto renters. I mean, you come to me, we're a one-stop, one-stop shop. And as I said, with three quarters of the market, we're already appointed with them and we do all the legwork and shop it out. And I've got a wonderful service team that handles all Christians that, uh, you know, handle renewals and retention. And, you know, you really, and if it's going to go up 15% at the end of the renewal, they'll reshop it for you and uh, place you with a, a company of comparable um, you know, premium and uh, coverage, you know, with what you had before. So um, it's, it's a blessing to uh, just to be in the client's corner instead of a, the company's corner. Yeah, most definitely that yeah. is. And I know um, you have another talent. Um, you're a rapper, you rap, you know, did a commercial yeah. Um, yeah. with the rapping. Who I inspired... I haven't written a rap for my insurance uh, agency yet. I'm working on that slowly but surely, but I've, I've had a rap on video on YouTube. Uh, it's called a ridiculous business marketing rap. You can look it up. I did it in 2014, had it professionally done. And the whole idea was, you know, if you're listening to this and you're a salesperson or you're a business owner and you want to differentiate yourself, when you go to networking groups, you have to come up with something more than, Hi, I'm Joe with Joe's Plumbing, and we fix your drain. And if you're meeting at seven o'clock in the morning, nobody's awake yet. And so I just, I came up with this rap because I really wanted to blow them away and wake them up. And, uh, you know, and I was part of an organization, my co-author, Mike Crow, who's a millionaire and has a large uh, home inspection company called Texan Spec in Dallas, uh, actually in, um, uh, I'm sorry, Northwestern Hills. He, um, you know, uh, with, I kind of lost track on my thought there, but, <laughs> uh, you know, he's been, um, he's been instrumental in coaching me and he can encourage me to take that rap forward. And, uh, you know, uh, 
and even in his meetings, he would ask me to wake wake up the, the, the business meetings and the organization is with the business owners group. He would say, wake them up for me, do the wrap. So it, it opens a lot of doors. You know, if you can, if you can do something that's different, you know, my case, first two lines, I'm Craig Speck, with Speck Transportation. We provide the wheels to help you travel the nation. I mean, just those two. And there's a whoo at the end, you know, I go whoo at the end of the wrap, you know? And so it's, uh, it's about, um, it's about a minute and 21 seconds on the video with music, but about, a little less than 60 seconds so you can get it in but you know have something have something that really makes you stand apart you know Definitely. you know you 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 want to you want to catch people's attention and keep it yeah and i and i totally agree with that when it comes to the business world um you have to be creative you got to get people excited about your product um if you're not excited they won't be excited they only going to feed off your energy they going to feed off your body language but like you said, hey, I'm Joe from Joe's Plumbing here to do a service. That sounds very boring. Like, oh, I want to do business with you. But exactly. if you're excited, like, oh, well, I got to get with Craig. He's very he's, he's excited. He's fun. And I love to do business because you bring life um, to the business industry. And that's a beautiful thing to do. You last that. Well, you know, there's so many people today that are even answering the phone like they're apathetic or they're, uh, you know, or they don't care. I mean, you call most companies, you get put on hold and, and there's a system that tells you, well, there's nine different ways, you know, uh, we've changed our menus change. And so you got nine different options. Is it nine different options to make me mad or is it nine different options to help me? Now, if they just told me that and said, we've got nine options and we'll piss you off before you get to us. <laughs> I mean, you know, you would laugh and you'd, you'd, you'd enjoy it, you know, but they come back and they're saying the same thing over. I told a guy the other day, I said, I said, you know, no matter how nice you are when you get to the phone, I said, you're already in a deficit with the client because they've been hearing the same message over and over and over again. The problem is most business owners and salespeople don't call and listen to their own their own voicemail or their own automated attendant, how horrible it is. And so I always, I have an exciting voicemail. People have called me and told me to hang up so they can listen to my voicemail. That's when you know you've done something right. I Call and listen to my voicemail sometime and you will, you'll, you'll see it's, it's a great example. I got it from Jeffrey Gittimer, a great sales trainer that I've done sedans for and I have about probably 15 of his 30 books. So I can't take credit for it, but I, I definitely implement you know what I learned. Awesome, and uh, that's good. And like I said, having fun, being creative, and um, and getting marketing books. I know we have information we teach you with enhancing your marketing and promoting. And people don't understand that that's where the work really come in at with your marketing and promoting. If you're not promoting, if you're doing some sorry marketing, people really ain't gonna pay no attention to you. You know, people want all these great followers. I like, I want to have millions of followers on YouTube, but if you're not being creative uh, with the things you do, people's not gonna really follow because they want their time values to have their time wasted. Absolutely. You know? I, wanna, I wanted to just real quick, I wanted to share one short testimonial that's in my, in my book. Okay, from, go ahead. From an African-American lady by the name of Monica Bogar. And she has a company called uh, Boss's Baskets by Mo in Dallas. He says, Craig demonstrates the true life of diversity and inclusion. As a new business owner, he's shown support and guidance throughout the commercial insurance process. Craig Speck is my insurance agent, mentor, and friend. I've called him just to have someone who cares listen to one of my business owner episodes, and he listens and always prays with me. I appreciate his advice and presence. Craig is more than a mentor. He is my friend, Monica Bogar. And, you know, mm -hmm. those kind, those are the kind of testimonials that you'll see when you get a copy of the book. Uh, Monica is an African-American, uh, you know, lady. She's going through a lot of things right now. She's getting a couple of businesses started. And she's one of these that, you know, she, she speaks her mind. She's Mrs. Blunt, what I call her. <laughs> and I just, yeah, listened to her, never argued with her. And just, and that's how I'll, I'll do. When you become my client, I'm going to care about you and your business. I'm going to drive referrals in your direction. I'm going to introduce you to a publisher to become an author. I'm going to introduce you to the great people that have helped me be successful. And, you know, I think that's, that's part of being externally focused and caring more about the client than just a transaction. 
Most definitely. And I'm not sure I want to protect my clients with the right amount, but if I get somebody that only can afford liability insurance for the six months and it's state minimum, we've done that together. Right. You know, she told one lady told me I've got a two hundred dollar budget and I, I came in under a little bit under. Hmm. And I got her I got her what she need I got her what she had to have. She has foot she needed full coverage and she needed minimum liability. Now I don't recommend that, but is that going to be the best for her right now? Yes, it is. And later on, after she's been insured six months, we can look at it. Awesome yeah. stuff. Awesome. <laughs> awesome stuff. Another question I'm going to ask you before we get ready to get off the air. When it comes to liability and full coverage, when people get a brand new car, do they ever ask you, do they ever say, well, I want to get liability or full coverage? Or how do you go about that too? Because I know people now, they were trying to find, I guess, the cheapest thing they can get but i know you get a brand new car you really want full coverage yeah anytime that you've got a uh an additional interest or you've got a lien holder or somebody that is uh carrying the note on that vehicle you've got to have uh collision and comprehensive and you know the best thing to do is try to work with a higher deductible just keep a low interest credit card in the freezer that you don't use for anything else but you'll pull out to pay that thousand dollar deductible you know, and the higher the deductible is the portion that you pay before uh, the insurance company kicks in. So you want to have those as high as possible. My deductibles are all a thousand dollars on my auto. You know, some people have a lot of people have two fifty, and they're really overpaying for insurance. I always say a minimum of five hundred. But yeah, you always need the one of the one of the dumb things that people do, Furman, is they take that um, they take that that car and they cancel their insurance on it. And that they purchased from a dealership, and then they they stick that single interest insurance on it that they have, and it drives your payment way way up. And it's real hard to get it off and get insurance regular insurance put back on. So, you know, um, I had a, I had one lady who had a car with a lien holder, and she said, "Craig, right now all I can afford is liability." And I said, "I don't recommend it, but we did it. Got her minimum. She'll come back." After six months, we'll get her full coverage, but she's taking a chance. You know, that car could be repossessed because of that. But, you know, you can't force people to act. You, you act in their best interest. You get you. I mean, with me, when I first meet somebody, and my apologies to you is normally you already have my book in your hand by now, and I just get so many requests for it. Mm -hmm. I'm working with an active client. I, first thing I do is mail them a book. I want them to have this book. I don't care about the sale of the book. I care about it getting this in their hands so that they have something to refer to, especially when I'm not around. But yeah, you have to have, whenever you buy something and they're carrying the note, you've got to have collision comprehensive. And it's a good idea. And a lot of the, the dealers, I think, sell it now because I haven't had a chance to offer much as gap insurance. Most of them, they include the gap insurance in, in the note to where if you, to, if you totaled it, and, you know, you owed more on it than it was worth, then that gap insurance would kick in and pay the, pay the, the dealer off or the lien holder. So it's good to get gap insurance. I recommend it, you know, either through the, the folks that you bought the car from or through myself. So, but yeah, yeah, uh, liability, liability, if it's car's paid for and it's values less than $2,000, yeah, get, you know, but even then you may want to consider, you know, having full coverage because the liability only covers them, their mm -hmm. injuries, um, all of that. And, wow. You know, the collision covers you for a wreck with another vehicle, comprehensive, covers everything else. If you hit a tree, if you, uh, if you hit a deer, I mean, I don't recommend uh, killing Bambi, but <laughs> if, you, if, you run, I mean, if you run into a deer or a cow, you'll know it because your car will will be very uh, those those are some heavy animals i've i've heard of a 15 passenger van hitting a deer i had a client that ran into a deer up in the mountains and uh the, the van was pretty heavily damaged those uh, mm. those, those animals are solid muscle i tell you oh they, they yeah. are because they said a deer would tear your car up yeah it will mm. Absolutely. wow so like i said y'all make sure you get full coverage insurance um uh, make sure you get in touch with craig get his book get some information Cover yourself. Be responsible. The Bible says not be slothful in business with favor and spirit. So don't be slothful when it comes to 
protecting yourself and protecting your loved ones because who hates to take money out your own pocket to help so take care of someone else and it leaves you in the blind. So be responsible, be wise when it comes to taking care of our priorities. Well, I know we're present for time. So Craig, you have any final remarks you will leave here for the listening audience? Cause we know it's gonna well, be my YouTube channel. I would say, please don't drive without auto insurance. You know, don't, don't take a chance. I mean, there's so many things that can happen to you. You can be arrested you know, side, given a large citation, you know, you can be, you can go to, go to jail, uh, be arrested, you know, for not, not having that proper coverage and carry your insurance card with you. Don't depend on your phone, keep it in your wallet or in your glove box and keep your glove box clean so you can get to it. The ideal thing is to have it. If you're a man, have it in your wallet, because if you get pulled over, you're going to show it to the officer. They can usually look it up so they can find out you know, it, the stupid thing people do is give give a current an expired a current insurance card that they've actually canceled it, and the police officer can look it up. They have systems now, so don't try to fool the officer. Have the insurance current. If you don't have insurance today, call me. Let's get that done for you. Let's get you a copy of my book. You know, let let let's uh, let's have some helpful information and and get you educated to the point where you just don't fall on your face. And also, and also I'm gonna ask this too, um, switching over with your insurance company, just asking this question, how did that work too from someone who would have previous insurance company to switch over to your insurance company? How does that work also from a business perspective? Well, there's, there's a couple of factors on that. One is that you're not locked into any long-term contract with an insurance company. You can cancel at any time, cover this in my book as well. They have to refund the portion of the unused uh, premium, the unused days. And so it, it, it's real easy with my company because I just, uh, I send in a submission sheet with the cancellation information. My service team uh, takes calls, the other company cancels it, sends them whatever they need, and then transitions everything over so that you know, the uh, the client doesn't have to get involved in that aspect. There are a couple of companies that, you know, you got to get on the phone with sometimes because they're stubborn and, and including my previous one that will just, you know, that they're losing clients left and right to the independent uh, agents like myself because, the you know, the client wants a personal touch. And there's a lot of good captive agents out there, but I go and see them and give them my business cards because they turn so many people away every day because mm. they can't do certain things. And so, um, you know, for me to go out and talk to them, it's a, it's a, it can be a gold mine just for my agency, just because right. all of those people that I had a state farm agent the other day. She says, Craig, I'm turning away so many people all the time. I do their auto and their home and they're happy. And then they want me to do their business and, or they want health insurance and I got to turn them away. And so now we have an agreement where she sends all those to me. Wow. The same thing in an Allstate agency. And we write for Allstate because we do so much volume. But I went to see an Allstate agent's office. Man, same thing. She's turning people away all the time. Mm. And she says, I, and both of them said, I don't have anybody to send them to. Nobody's ever come by. It's like, man, this is just <laughs> no, no brainer. I mean, I did wow. this in the fan rental business too before Enterprise had 15 passenger vans. Mm -hmm. And I worked for a small outfit that rented them to companies. I went to all the enterprise offices, called them all and said, send me your calls for 50 passenger vans that were coming in left and right every day. It's the <laughs> same thing with this. There are the captives, the captive agents have to turn down so many people, you know, or they're, or they're just going way up because they only represent one. Wow. Man, that's awesome stuff that you brought um, to the table, Craig. I do appreciate you once again. Oh, no um, man, I got to take your time to be this guest to join me in prime time here on Walking This Way Impact Wars Podcast. We're going to be back next Tuesday night. Same bad time, same bad channel. For those who don't know, that's the old Batman show. They used to come on that way before my time. That was Adam West. But I'm going to tell you, my personal opinion, Mike Keaton was the best Batman. That's just my opinion. Just like with Superman, Christopher Reeve is the best Superman. Not the new guy. He's okay, but Christopher Reeve is the best Superman to me. Absolutely. So uh, y'all yeah. be blessed. Have a great night. Um, can you have anything you want to share with the, um, I do not. I, I've just been, uh, educated by tonight's guest and I appreciate Mr. Craig for everything tonight. I, I really was inspired and I also learned a lot as well as things I didn't know. So, um, by me being, I appreciate that. 
Yes, sir. Uh, by me being quiet, I just be in a zone because I be trying to, trying to pay attention because a lot of things you talked about tonight I didn't know of. So I do appreciate your insight on tonight, sir. Absolutely. Glad to help. Man, I appreciate you again, Craig. Um, like I said, we'll be back here next week. Lord, stay the same. Y'all be blessed. Have a great night. Be encouraged. Stay positive. Stay focused. Work on yourself. We always revolving in life. Consider yourself a life student. We always learning. Um, most of our encourage everybody, man, re establish a relationship with the Most High God. God is calling us closer to Him. I'm knowing, I'm sensing that He's close, calling us closer to Him. Remove everything out the way. Let Him be the center that we need. That's why I love Matthew six thirty three. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all His righteousness, and all these things gonna be added. Don't take no thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow gonna take care of itself. So remember, that's keep Him first. Keep Him first. All everything else will be adding to us. Y'all be blessed, everybody. Have a great night. See you next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.